Hello YouTube and welcome back to another sensor spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at the near sensor and some of the attributes you might want to use for it in Python. So jumping right into things, here we have the example. And as you can see, when I play the game, I have this cube. I can move it around. I have a button over there that's looking kind of ominous. If I move close to the button, we'll see the letter E appears, indicating that I need to press E in order to activate the button. I hit E, opens the door, I can go on my merry way. Wait, let's go see if we can press the button again. No, we can't. And the logic for this is really quite simple. We have a near sensor that is looking for the property player, which is on our cube. We have a keyboard sensor E, and we have a property sensor opened so that we can't open the door a second time. We have three controllers. We have a NAND controller and two AND controllers. The near sensor is wired into all three of those. The keyboard sensor is only wired into one of the AND controllers. And the property sensor is wired into all three controllers as well. On the actuators, we have two visibility actuators, one setting it to be invisible and the other setting it to be visible. We also have the property actuator, which is assigning opened to be true. And then on our door, we have the action actuator to play the animation of the door opening. So the property and the action actuator are wired into the same controller as the keyboard sensor. So now we're going to take a closer look at the near sensor itself. Okay, so here we are looking at the near sensor, and of course, as always, we can see we have all of the standard buttons, such as are on the always sensor. We also have this property field, we have a distance, and a reset distance. So the near sensor will switch to positive and trigger the connected controllers. Whenever there is an object that is within a certain distance of the object that this sensor is attached to. So the property field will make it so the sensor will only trigger whenever an object that has this property on it is near it. So for my example, I am using player, which means that the only objects that will trigger this near sensor will have to have the property player. Distance is pretty self-explanatory. That is how far away this object needs to be in order to trigger the sensor. So a distance of one means that the object has to be one blender unit away in order to trigger this near sensor. Reset distance is how far away that object then needs to go in order to reset the sensor. So what this means is right now, if an object with the property player would move towards our object, it will trigger the sensor whenever it gets to a distance of 1, and the sensor will go positive and send a pulse to all of the connected controllers. And then whenever the object with the property player starts moving away from our object, it will have to get two blender units away from our object before the sensor will go negative and send a pulse to the connected controllers. And this is really useful for making it so that something doesn't just flash up uh, repeatedly, like the text prompt over the button. So if I play the game, I move closer to the button, we see the E pops up, but then I have to move farther away for the E to go away. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and hop into Python and see what some of the useful attributes for this sensor are in there. Okay, so here we are in Python, and of course we can import the sensor the same way as all of the others. And moving on, we have the configuration attributes, the first of which is distance. And as you can guess, this is getting or setting the distance that will trigger the sensor, which is the same as this distance here. Reset distance is as well just changing or reading the reset distance. And prop name is exactly the same. So prop name will take a string which represents the property that it will look for, or it will return a string. So next we have the status attributes, the first of which is hit object. And this returns the first object that has triggered this sensor. 
Um, so this one's probably not quite as useful as hit object list, which returns all of the objects that have triggered this sensor within the last frame. So for instance, if I have one near sensor on a cube, and I want to know whenever a bunch of objects have gotten near it, and I want to do something with all of those objects, I would use hit object list. So the near sensor is actually a pretty small sensor as far as the amount of attributes that it has, but it is still incredibly useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to try and help you out. If you'd like to suggest a future tutorial, not a sensor spotlight, but a regular tutorial, there is a link in the description for that as well. So next time we're going to be taking a look at the property sensor, but until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.